Hello, so we're going to go ahead and create some clothes that uh, fit over this character and we're going to do this in a couple of different ways but I wanted to go ahead and show you that I've added two new bones and those are this bone back here, the backward bone, and this bone here, the forward bone. These are necessary for animating clothes when you're not using cloth animation if you're going to be doing any kind of wrinkles and we are. I'm going to be teaching you what I'm calling the wrinkle loop method of modeling clothes and it's going to be uh, fairly straightforward so let's go ahead and create a new circle. So we're going to take this circle and move it up. Now when we model the cloth we don't need to model it very exactly. It doesn't have to be anywhere near the body. It should be somewhat near just so that it doesn't go, go off the deep end and, and if it's nearby you can really tell what's going on. But uh, we don't have to have it extremely near so just model it wherever is comfortable for you. And we're going to basically be creating a, a floating coat. So we're going to create a mirror, like so. And our coat is going to be open front, like this. So let's just extend up like this. Right? And uh, we also need to create some sleeves. So let's add a circle here. Um, size much smaller, verts much fewer, there we go, rotate uh, y90, there we go, and just move that to the sleeve, like so, yum, there we are, and then extend it over this way, and it turns out that uh, the extended sleeve is, the, uh, the extensions are all inside out, so yeah, there we are. Oh, do I not have keys on? Brilliant. Sorry about that. Uh, and then we'll just flip. There we are, the sleeves. So what exactly is a um, uh, wrinkle, uh, the uh, wrinkle loop modeling? Well, the idea is that when you make the clothes, you actually make them with the wrinkles built right into the topology. Uh, and as you might remember, when we made the body, we built the body with loops in various perfect places so that when we animate the body, it looks right um, and it bunches up correctly. This is the same idea, except for we're going to be taking into account the wrinkles of the cloth rather than the uh, fundamental body that we that we might be using. You know, it's not the biological body we care about; it is the cloth wrinkles. So to show you what I mean, we're going to take this and we're going to create a new wrinkle right here. and that's the sort of wrinkle that you would have on a coat. That's where it would wrinkle. And then we're going to create another wrinkle here in the middle. Oop. But this is a sleeve wrinkle that happens at the elbow, so it would actually go like this. And then we'd have another one which would go the opposite direction, like this. <coughs> and that's how the shoulder would wrinkle, right? So that's how we'll put in our loops. And we have a similar situation down here, so let's put a wrinkle here and it would be something like this and uh, we might as well just create another one of the same sort and then we need to go up and around and uh, actually create our coat so let's put in a cut here a little bit uh, hiccupy just extend up extend up extend up and pull this back Pull this back, pull this back, scale y zero, extend back, extend down, and there we go, extend down, extend over, screwed that up, let's try that again. And then we can merge them in together. I've got this. No, turn that off. Don't need it. Merge. 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 A little hard to see this, so let's bring it in. There you go. So what am I doing exactly? I'm creating a floating coat around the character. And uh, one of the things you might notice is that this part here doesn't have any wrinkles put into it yet. So we're actually going to build the wrinkles in just by manipulating the proximity of these loops 
and then that way we'll be able to to rely on the wrinkles to form uh, and we can always adjust that to look different later depending on how we'd like it to be but this is just the basics um, we obviously need it to be against the skin right so we're going to go ahead and use shrink wrap and I know a lot of people have used shrink wrap in the past um, and perhaps you have too and you've probably seen something like this and been annoyed by it and even if you add a little bit of an offset you're still going to have problems where you've got the situation where it's kind of floating above the surface and it's really awkward and that's going to be an issue uh, if you're a lot of people clone the underlying mesh and try and do it that way we're not going to clone the underlying mesh um, or any of that stuff uh, but we are going to end up with some pop through and I'll teach you how to deal with that in a different episode um, but in this episode we're going to focus on something that's slightly puffy that is to say a coat and we will uh, we will go ahead and not have any pop through problems with that but you can see that our floating coat slides right down against the body and immediately works fine and that's exactly what we would like so let's go ahead and finish off the modeling by oh, uh, let's add in a sub there we are. subsurface so now we want to actually um, just hide these so we can actually get some work done uh, you know, this skeleton is a little bit too difficult to see through, so let's turn it off for a second here. There. And now we can actually see what we're doing, and let's go ahead and link up all of these faces. We need another loop here, so put one in, and then we start linking. And here you can see that we're actually inside of the model, so let's just pull it out so it's not inside the model. Um, the shrink wrap can malfunction if you start inside of the model so the only important control here is that you remain outside of the model when you do your modeling uh, you don't want to you don't want to start inside of the skin of the uh, base mesh now here you can see we're starting to skew and that's not what we want so let's undo that and undo that and instead of skewing let's go ahead and take a look at why we why we skewed and the answer is because we actually wrap here as you can see we go around so we want to put in another cut here and then we will move the whole thing down a little bit and this will be there we are that's better just hook it up hook it up hook it up that up didn't I try that again here there we are I accidentally clicked on one of the um, one of the verts in the back that was a mistake I did it again try not to click on the verts in the back right, there we go so when we look at it we have a lot of density right here and this is actually we're going to go ahead and add in some more uh, wrinkle topology and we have a lot of options as to how we want it to wrinkle. Uh, we can either have it wrinkle down out or down in, uh, however we'd prefer. And since we already have some down out wrinkles, I'm going to add a down in wrinkle. Which is just a matter of shifting everything such that there is a mesh loop that moves down like so. And here is the color. Let's go ahead and pop our color a little bit higher here. There we go. Bring this in. And um, let's just build ourselves a color by extending up and then out and down like so. And we can adjust the back because it's obviously not going to be quite right. Something like that works. And uh, let's go ahead and turn these back on so we can see how that looks. And you can see that we have something that resembles uh, an actual coat. Um, the only issue is that we have the color on the, uh, the color is awkward looking. And what we can do here, because we're using some thick material, we can actually add a solidify. And that will give us uh, both sides of the faces. Now the solidify is going to be problematic later on, and I'll have to show you how to fix that. But for now, you can see that we have a coat and it looks perfectly fine. So we're going to go ahead and save it and come back in the next time and do some animations with it.